I was looking over the blogs this morning, doing a little research. I came across a story that the mainstream media has chosen to ignore, and I think that this one is a blockbuster. On July 9th, the U.S. House of Representatives voted nearly unanimously to rebuke President Barack Obama over his June 24th signing statement, in which he openly declared that he would ignore provisions of the law that he just signed. In a bipartisan vote of 429 to 2 to rebuke President Obama was a direct result of Obama's assertion that he could ignore restrictions on how a $106 billion loan guarantee to the International Monetary Fund could be used. In signing this statement, Obama claimed that the provisions within this bill would interfere with his constitutional authority to conduct foreign relations by directing the executive to take certain positions in negotiations and discussions with international organizations and foreign governments, or by requiring consultation with Congress prior to such negotiations or discussions. I will not treat these provisions as limiting my ability to engage in foreign diplomacy and negotiations. Well, it would appear that Barack Obama has gone off the deep end, that he thinks of himself as an imperial president, as a dictator, that he can just up and decide what law will be, what laws he will follow. Barack Obama claimed to be a constitutional lawyer. He claimed that he was a professor at Chicago University and that he taught constitutional law, that he is an expert on the Constitution. Well, we know from Article 1, Section 1, Clause 1 of the Constitution, it states that all legislative powers herein are to be vested in the Congress of the United States, not in the office of president. We also know that Congress has the exclusive power over spending money. Article 1, Section 9, which states no money will be drawn from the Treasury, but in consequence of appropriations made by law under Congress' exclusive power is to regulate commerce with foreign nations, as listed in Article 1, Section 8 of the Constitution. It says in Article 2, Section 2, that he, the President, shall have power by and with the advice and consent of the Senate to make treaties. He does not have the ability to just go and make treaties on his own. So people even of his own party, rebuked him. And you recall that he complained about President Bush signing statements, and he promised that he would not do this. Even the very liberal Barney Frank stressed, we do this not on behalf of this institution, but literally on behalf of democracy, on behalf of the process by which people get elected and deliberate and do this. There is a kind of ultra-lateralism in an undemocratic and unreachable way to these signing statements that is the opposite of what we do here. Also, Representative Kay Granger, who put forth the amendment which rebukes President Obama, said later, I appreciate the bipartisan support for my amendment, and I think we can all agree that now more than ever we need to keep a watchful eye on how we spend our money, regardless of whether it's spent domestically or overseas. Sending money overseas into an organization such as the International Monetary Fund, with no commitment from the administration to ensure the funds are used properly or will not be given to any state sponsor of terrorism, is completely unacceptable. This passage in particular is one that Barack Obama stated he would not follow. It states, the Secretary of the Treasury shall instruct the United States Executive Director at each of the international financial institutions to use the voice and vote of the United States to oppose the provision of loans or other use of funds of the respective institution to any country, the government of which the Secretary of State has determined to be a government 
that has repeatedly provided support for acts of international terrorism. Barack Obama, when he signed this bill, rejected that paragraph. He signed it into law, but he said he will not follow that. Surely, Barack Obama has shown his true colors here and gone off the deep end, has once again sided with those enemies of our country. He believes that it's okay for the International Monetary Fund to take gold from this country and sell it so that they can loan it to governments that sponsor international terrorism, that we should take our money and give it to our enemies to enable them to attack us. Truly, this man has gone off the deep end. Thanks for listening. Uh, 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 uh.